outside of Pittsburgh. Here, come here. Put your head up where you put them. Courtney Kohler's day-to-day -day life took a sharp turn in December 2020 after a battle with COVID-19. It was literally in the blink of an eye. I'm three to six months, one prescription to this one. Is she says she learned her kidneys weren't working right and now anticipates needing a new one. It's been devastating. Um, I went from pretty active, you know, we have two kids. I worked full time. You know, we went to camp, we went kayaking. You know, and now I sleep and go to dialysis and that's about it. While she wades through the medical info of her new reality. So this is my daily cocktail of meds. She's also sorting through the bills that come with it. And so in all of these papers, how much do you estimate you've paid yourself yet? Uh, three, three thousand dollars. Kohler says health insurance and disability help cover most costs. But looking ahead, she knows the charges will keep coming. Does this change how you how you plan it does. financially? Oh, it, it absolutely. I'm not working now, so I'm not putting anything towards my retirement anymore. What little we did have started is gone. So now I'm thinking, well, retirement would have been 65 maybe. Now it's 75 if I'm lucky. We have college to pay for. Will that get done? You know, because. Everything's being pushed back now. Recent cost estimates from Fairhealth find the average amount paid to an in-network provider, including from the plan and patient for COVID-19 hospitalization, is more than $30,000 and nearly $100,000 with complexities. Early on in the pandemic, a lot of insurance companies were waiving those costs. So if you got hospitalized or you needed treatment, you would have zero cost sharing. Well, those days are over for the most part. Sabrina Corlett is with Georgetown University Center on Health Insurance Reforms. Even as COVID costs go up, other costs are going down. Um, so, so far anyway, we've seen premiums stay relatively stable. That could change, however, over time. The ACA and other federal law prohibit insurers from charging people more by their health conditions. Kritika Amin is with the Kaiser Family Foundation. The organization looked at some initial rate filings for marketplace insurers. So lower premiums means lower financial assistance. And so people may have to change their plan um, to get the same level of financial assistance or keep paying however much they were paying before. Financial strain from medical issues isn't new with COVID, though. You just never know when you're going to be in one of these situations. The Joe Beretta Foundation sees the impact as it tries to help with the non-medical expenses as patients face heart failure, some who dealt with delayed treatment during the pandemic. Our patients kind of felt the same thing that everybody else felt during COVID. If you lost work hours, if you lost time, if you lost the ability to travel back and forth, to see families, that isolation that kind of the whole country went through. Imagine going through that while you're also in medical crisis. They partner with places like Family House in Pittsburgh, which houses families undergoing medical treatment at charitable rates. Over the last fiscal year of our nights of service, 41% of them received some form of additional financial assistance beyond our charitable room rate. For the Kohlers, you know, I'm thankful, you know, to have insurance. It's great. Um, I'm, I'm thankful to be here paying hospital bills and that my family's not paying a funeral bill. In Pittsburgh, Haley Bull, Newsy.